Oh, well, so here we are. We're going to create uh, an LCD, LCD display uh, in Arduino for our Arduino using Tinkercad. So everything that we do here can eventually be transferred to the real Arduino. But in the meantime, you can practice here everything, how it's going to be connected. So we're going to be adding a display to our Arduino. Let's pick the Arduino first. Where is it? Right there. It's a little bit slow. Now, here, let's use a, a large breadboard. And, uh, and I will tell you why. going to use this one, a large one. Take a little while. There we go. Put somewhere here. Now, let's get the display right here 1602 and uh, the nice thing about this display obviously <laughs> it is a simulation but ensure that the display that you get has the pin already pre-soldered it's kind of bad to start with a with a display like this with a pin not soldered and actually it's the same cost it's not like a, a display without the pin solder it costs much less now pretty much the same price it's just that it just happened that sometime you get if you don't check carefully where you're buying it you might get a display without the pin pre-soldered and that's bad because it's kind of hard if you don't have experience soldering pins on these tiny boards it's a problem it's going to be a problem so now when you pass the, or move the display around the breadboard, you can feel that it's kind of want to stick to somewhere. The idea is to stick right there. You see, you see how the first pin kind of uh, got black, the one that it says ground actually right there. Now, let's see if I can increase this in size. So <clears throat> a little bit of, uh, as I always said, Houston, we have a problem here. Uh, I kind of lost, uh, somehow it stopped recording uh, I maintained the video but it stopped recording the voice so I'm doing a voiceover uh, it's kind of hard <laughs> now I need to watch what I'm doing to let you know right now I'm just adjusting the screen size by using control plus or control minus just like a regular browser and the important is that you you want to be sure that the LCD display is kind of stick to the board properly so it's well adjusted uh, and kind of bind into it now this pin here the first pin is ground I need to be inserted in the uh, row number one that would be letter E and uh, again adjusting a little bit little bit more what I'm doing and uh, let's see we are ready to identify the pins I'm gonna go to PowerPoint and uh, PowerPoint is misbehaving. Hold for one second here until I fix this. All right, so I'm back again. PowerPoint <laughs> fixed the problem of PowerPoint as well. So now I'm showing you uh, the pins of the LCD 1602. I'm showing pin number one ground, pin number two is five volt, pin number three is come from the wiper of the potentiometer, and one of the pins goes to ground on the, on the potentiometer, and the other one goes to five volts. Pin number four goes to pin 12 on the Arduino. And pin number five, I think it's enabled and it goes to ground. Then we go pin number six on the display. Need to go to pin 11 on your Arduino. Here I'm showing you the table, the Arduino, and the letter D for display. So that's basically the connection that you need to follow, like a recipe, not a big deal. Pin 7, 8, 9, and 10 are not used because we use a library. And that's that's kind of fancy. So uh, 11, 12, 13, and 14, those pins need to be connected to the Arduino pins. And pin number 15 goes through a 5-volt 
resistor through and that resistor need to have a special value I think about 250 so let uh, put this in a corner so I can see what I'm doing and how to do the uh, kind of a very quick connection between what I need to connect on my display versus what I have on my Tinkercad uh, let's see so that would be negative that row back there and uh, so I need to go through uh, a negative in a cable connection here let's see how I go through that if I don't like it I delete it and go back again do a little routing more like the idea of the routing of the cable is where I, I will mostly have all the cables so they look kind of uh, nice they are not interfering with other parts of the breadboard so I'm connecting the ground so we know that we are in ground let's change color here to uh, it's gonna be black for ground this one as well it's gonna be black that's pin number one on my uh, display so I have that pin right there now pin number two what we're gonna do with pin number two according to my display let's increase the increase the size a little bit more so so you know what I'm doing and uh, pin number two is set BCC so that needs five volts so let's route five volts here I'm taking the five volts not from the Arduino but from the breadboard so the breadboard need that five volt let's route that five volt right through here so it looks nice and let's get that into the breadboard to the rail that uh, that have the five volts that's it and uh, so the next pin is the backlighting you know uh, for my display so let's move this to the left and uh, let's get a potentiometer let's open this more let's get the the pot right there now where I gonna get the potentiometer you know landed in my breadboard well uh, be sure there is an empty space and uh, and that you have you know easy access to the pin of the potentiometer I think that's good enough there so now let's get the connection I don't like to you know go through over the pins of the breadboard so I like you know kind of route the cables as best as I can that goes to positive that's good 5 volts now I need uh, to accommodate this route looks better well more or less that will do now the negative of the potentiometer uh, I will do that and that needs to go to uh, ground there we go doesn't look that pretty but I mean the idea is you have the idea so I have the ground uh, let's see if I can pull the color a little bit hard when you have magnified so much so let me see if I can get the cable I touch it but it doesn't uh, behave properly let's reuse the screen let's see if it now it works yeah so let's put that on black that will do uh, remember I'm doing a voiceover whatever I see I'm kind of a uh, narrating what's going on now I'm gonna put the wiper into uh, pin number three of the displays from the wiper to the display right there um, whoops color here should be not black because it's not uh, let's put it green that will do so let's go back to what I'm going here through my pin definition pin 4 need to go to pin 12 let's see pin 4 that one right here see don't follow the numbers that I have on my breadboard there uh, sometimes they might mislead you so be careful there I'm counting that pin 4 okay 
and uh, going back again to PowerPoint now pin number five need to go to ground so let's do that let's go to ground on pin five yep good enough let's do a little bit of routing just so that it don't look bad and that will do so change the color to black because it's ground make life easier to understand what we're doing um, let's see now now we go to pin number six that go to 11 I use the same route as before try to avoid you know hiding uh, hiding uh, you know holes in the breadboard so and that will do change the color again that will do we are almost there this is it goes very quickly you shouldn't have any problem doing this installation you follow the mapping that I have here ping a to 10 uh, I'm sorry 7 a 9 and 10 are not used because we are using a library then we use pin 5 let's see pin 5 goes to let's see I'm routing here I'm routing to um, I think that that's a mistake I can see it now it's a mistake I uh, should be pin 5 should go to pin 11 I think I need to go one uh, one below if I do the count one one yeah two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven you see that is not right that is in the wrong position one less see if I can move it there we go now it's correct that's perfect now let's go back to PowerPoint I fixed that one let's go to this one 11 12 is pin 4 oops that's not it sorry that one is is correct 4 using the same route doesn't look too much of a mess of cables uh, I don't like that one kind of ugly let's delete it let's redo it again and go through the right right route so it looks better drop it here and we are in business so let's go back uh, to PowerPoint and I'm going to pin no, pin 3 go to pin uh, to display 13 to the pin in so we go again the same route pin 3 use the same route drop it that will do and uh, let's go back now I got pin 2 pin 14 that will do two left now just only two pin left and they're straightforward and uh, one of them is pin 15 that goes through an LED and this one the last one is easy that goes to ground so use any route to get it to ground and uh, so let's change it to uh, if I can pick it black and that will do so I only, I only have one left which is pin 15 and uh, what I will do let's see there we go let's pick the resistor and let's put this resistor between the positive and pin 15 so that's the main idea there we go now that's perfect you don't need to add anything else except that we need to figure it out what's the proper value and uh, 
150 might be on the neighborhood of having a little bit more of if I use 150 a little bit more of, of 20 milliamps at the LCD that is using this display so that might be a problem but again it's this is what is good for simulation so I already installed the potentiometer everything looks good I put a 150 resistor a 150 ohm resistor that might be a value too small but we'll see now let's see what else I need to do here I'm checking that I cover everything now I need I need this code because obviously I need to install a code let's do increase the size of this PowerPoint so I see what I'm doing let's go now to the code let's do text and uh, let's delete all this and let's start by the hitting the library because we need the liquid crystal library because we are using <clears throat> We're going to be using this library that has all characters already defined so that's they are kind of nice you don't need to do uh fancy stuff you just you know like like you are writing in a computer or anything else that's it whatever you write as a text will show up in the display and that's kind of nice for that we need to include that uh liquid crystal library and that's how we will we'll do that in the Tinkercad or in, in any Arduino sim, in any Arduino program or software like IDE so I include the library there's an structure for that let me move this to the corner here and let me move and make life easier so we can see both pages simultaneously and the next is we're gonna use a variable called number it's gonna be a float because it has decimal in it and the next line that we need is the definition itself of the pins of the Arduino how they're going to be used in relationship with the library uh, include so now we're going to be using this liquid crystal pin definition sort of like a pin mode uh, but more like for the relationship between the library that we have and the liquid crystal the way that we're going to use it so it's going to be pin 12 11 5 4 3 2 those pins are reserved right now for the liquid crystal in this case for the display so let's start programming let's put the boy setup as always and let's keep writing here what we want to do we want to define like for example we're gonna uh, initialize the display and let the Arduino know that there is something out there that is called a display and let's initialize it and it's gonna be a display type 16.2 there are other displays that are 16.4 and so forth that has four lines our has 16 character two lines and that's what is called a 16.2 we are defining that now let's print something very quickly let's print whatever you type within quote it's going to be printed at the lcd display and that's kind of nice because it's, you don't go through any fancy stuff it's just whatever you write in lcd print whatever is within quote it's going to be printed now the only thing you have to be careful have to have si no more than 16 characters whatever is above 16 is gone okay let me fix this somehow i messed up the voice setup here is parentheses let's open a bracket and let's see anything else here I think we should close the bracket and that's basically what we're gonna do in the voice setup just you know initialize the display and have an instruction on it about uh, print the the word that is in quote hello TQ 2007 let's delay a little bit that action and that will do nothing more I'm not doing any pins you know like any pin mode input output so that's more than enough I'm only initializing the display with instruction 
in this case LCD begin and I'm writing the word hello TQ 2007 which happened to have 15 character one more maybe two no I mean and the 15 character include the space the 16th character include also the space between it so you have less 20 characters then it's gonna be cut up it's gonna be sharp you know now let's go to the next instruction void loop and let's see what we're gonna put together on the loop what we're gonna do we open the loop and let's work on a four this four will use the index I as always Although always we always use I or J for this index make life easier and we're gonna start from I equals zero and we're gonna continue this up to I less equal when you put less equal be better be sure that less equal is together you don't leave space because it's, it may confuse the compiler for the Arduino here and uh, we're gonna go to 50 and uh, we're gonna go on one by one okay so 0 1 2 3 4 5 and so forth anything else here that I have to mention looks good let's open a bracket for the 4 and let's see what this 4 is all about we're gonna use the variable that we already defined above the flow which it was number and we're gonna assign the value of 3.1415 right and that time I so it's just simple you know uh, we are multiplying I by 3.14 which is basically pi right what we're gonna do with that uh, now careful here we need to adjust the row where we're gonna print this row zero right now has the word hello take you for uh, 2007 but the next line which is row one is where we want to have the numbers you see so for doing that we need to use the word or the instruction the set cursor and we're gonna set the cursor in the next line but in the first column so it's very important that we use then the LCD set set cursor and uh, you where we want to write things down LCD set cursor check the you know how is is written you know LCD set cursor is the C is in capital letter and we want to write on zero one one meaning row number two be careful with this so it's gonna be on the first column and the next is the is the is the row so we are gonna write the LCD print what the numbers obviously because that's the, the one that has the value uh, semicolon there we're gonna delay less half a second that's 500 that's and the four now we're gonna end the loop we're gonna put I don't like there right here so I kind of match if I open one I close it and the one in the middle for the four everybody has a semicolon as required let's check always good I mean our, the, the compiler will catch them but it will create sometimes some the mistake that you're gonna get is so weird when you miss something like a semicolon so it's better to check it now and to ensure whatever need a semicolon to have it so you don't have kind of weird situation with a compiler and uh, I'm missing one right here see it's always double check what you're doing uh, LCD begin this is okay the delay is okay loop don't need one the four don't need one but the one that are here within the loop which are instruction for execution they have to have the semicolon and let's see anything else I think that uh, we are ready we are ready let's open this big so we know what we're doing now cross the fingers start simulation bingo oops something bad happened why 
there's a message underneath that says you are above 20 milliamps that resistor value is the one fifth is too small now the potentiometer something that i didn't tell you is that you can pick the size of this pot and this one is huge because i can tell let's stop this simulation for a second let me check the pot wow 250 no wonder uh obviously the kit the arduino kit the one that you are buying is about 10k so let's use 10k because that is the, what we have uh now that resistor is 150 we definitely need to increase it to avoid blowing up the lcd uh let's see again there we go looks a lot much better that's kind of the backlighting how much backlighting you want you know for the contrast that's sort that help you on the contrast to see what's going on so you can see the first line is hello tq207 and then the number so let's adjust this to let's say 5k it's a smaller i don't think that the kit has 5k but i can adjust better uh, i think that we are good enough in in 10 that will do so you can use the 5 or 10 and it looks good it looks pretty good right now at a 250 ohms resistor no more uh comment that we are blowing the lcd display looks good uh we can play around with that resistor and put whatever you want except values that will kill it no good one kilo ohm maybe that way too much yeah as you can see it's kind of this, the display looks kind of dark even at the maximum power i don't see much contrast meaning that 1k is way too much for that resistor let's drop it again let's see let me see what value i write right now i'm kind of re remember i'm doing a voiceover so it's kind of hard to f figure out what's going on i put it back in 250 and uh so now it's working good i think that i would do 250 looks good it depends on what you have on your on the arduino kit 333 is okay as well so you have anything about 150 that will work not much like 1k that way too much uh let's go back here again now that we're still working on this let's put 333 which is what typically this arduino kit has it looks good a little bit on the dark going into the dark side you know the, there's not much contrast and uh so i'd rather the 250 or anything about 150 and 250 will work perfect so that looks good let me go back again here so 150 again we we're gonna blow the lcd but the idea is so you ensure that you read the message underneath that says we are uh, above just a little bit of the of the margin of the 20 milliamp for the lcd that's all and uh so try to use a larger resistor instead of 150 maybe anything above that you can put if you only happen to have a small resistor you can put them in series to add more than 150 and that will work as well no big deal there so you know uh, in the other hand if you have big resistor you can put them in parallel be sure that you do the math for resistor in parallel to ensure that like for example if you happen to have two 600 resistor you can put those two in parallel and that will end up being about 300 so no big deal there but let's let's go back here uh, i want to change this resistor to something that looks better don't blow up the the display 250 sounds okay start the simulation and uh and that's it you can see the number is being changed as the you know as the, as the loop execute the only thing that you want to be careful here is that number will be getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it's pushing a number to the right and watch this closely as that number increases 
it's going to get to a point in where you want to clear the display because you see the 0 and the 8 now that A has been a leftover and that's kind of confusing and that number is there because uh, it was a remnant of the old loop so we want to fix that you can use like for example uh, LCD clear but instead of using the clear uh, let me show you a trick here better than do and we, instead of doing that let me show a quick trick that we can use to inst to get the display clear within the line that we want because LCD clear clear everything so you don't want to use LCD clear unless you want to really clear everything if you want that the hello tq 207 stay then we want to clear the line where the number is being written for that let's copy where it says this here the cursor we're going to adjust wh what we want to clear and we're going to clear obviously row one and with what we want to clear that out obviously with sp spaces so what we need to do instead of uh, sending to print something we want to print spaces so we're going to print 16 spaces and that will clear the whole line more than enough right because we are not using 16 character but this will ensure that we clear uh, that line in that in this case the row number one which is happening to be row two be careful with the concept here so I set the cursor and then I said I sent to print a bunch of uh, spaces so you want to call it this way a bunch of spaces and that will do so right now no problem it's printing you can see that is uh, as it's printing the numbers it clears them and uh, and you will never get that residues from all numbers because every time it go through it prints and clear everything but the line above is stay because we are only doing the clearance where we need to do it if you use clear LCD which is another another instruction or LCD clear that will clear the whole the whole display and uh, and perhaps that's not what you want um, so right now it looks really good you can see that how easy it is to get your display uh, working and whatever you need to print is going to be printed uh, using LCD print and uh, if it's a variable if it's characters like letters just put them under quote okay now the idea that I, I'm using the large breadboard is because we're going to be adding more stuff into it to make life easier so and we don't want to move things around so the way we install the LCD is the way it's going to stay for the whole semester we only need to worry now is to what we are going to be adding and whatever pins are left which are not many so uh, those pins remaining in the Arduino are the, the ones that we're going to be using for our ultrasound sensor that we're going to install it and use it in connection with our display to make a nice instrument uh, and that will work for us very nicely well enough is enough as I always said be safe whatever be your final destination bye